After watching this video, you should have a fundamental understanding of how we conceptualize light-matter interactions, the basis for spectroscopy, and how we can quantify the energy of light involved in one of these light-matter interactions. When light interacts with matter, we conceptualize that interaction as being between photons of light, which are these little energy packets that have wavelength and frequency associated with them, and the molecules or atoms that make up a substance. So let's just put a molecule here and say that this photon is going to interact with this molecule. We know that the wavelength times the frequency for a photon is equal to a universal constant, the speed of light, which is approximately 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we also know that if we want to calculate the energy of this photon, that there's an equation we can use, which is E equals H times the frequency. This frequency is the same as this one up here. And this is another constant, an important constant in quantum mechanics called Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. And the value that we get here for this answer is in units of joules per photon. Now we can combine this equation and this equation to get one equation that relates the wavelength of the light we're using with the energy of the photons that make up that light. And that equation simply is E equals HC over lambda, where this wavelength unit in this equation must be in meters. Well, it turns out that a lot of light that we use to analyze matter or derive information from matter is very short. So let's take an example where we're using, for example, photons that are green to analyze some molecular system. And let's say that the wavelength of that green light is 532 nanometers, and we want to know what the energy is of that light but we want to know it in a more commonly reported unit of kilojoules per mole. So how would we calculate this value given that the wavelength is 532 nanometers? So we can plug our values into the equation. E equals 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds times the speed of light, which is th approximately 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now notice that the unit on length here is meters. That means for this to work out to be joules for, per photon, that our wavelength is going to have to be in meters. Well, I said originally that we're looking at 532 nanometer light, so we need to convert that into meters. So that conversion is pretty straightforward. We know that one meter contains 10 to the ninth nanometers. So if we do that conversion, we get a value, which I'll put up here in the equation, of 5.32 times 10 to the minus seventh meters. We've got all our values put into the equation with the proper units, and now we can just crank out our answer. And if we do that, we get 3.74 times 10 to the minus 19th joules per photon. Well, I said earlier that we, I wanted this in kilojoules per mole, so we just have to do a unit conversion of joules per photon to kilojoules per mole. That's pretty straightforward. All I need to do is take 3.74 times 10 to the minus 19th. That's joules per photon knowing that one kilojoule contains a thousand joules that converts it from joules per photon to kilojoules per photon and then of course I can multiply times Avogadro's number which we know is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd that's photons per mole of photon and if I do that I'll put my number up here I in the end should get out around 225 kilojoules per mole. And that would be the energy of that green light that I used to perform that spectroscopy on the molecule in this problem.